Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Game Master Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today I'm going to be taking a first look at the Majestic Fantasy RPG by Robert S. Conley. Um, if you hadn't seen uh, previously, I had interviewed Robert uh, you know, about his game system and about some of the supplements that he had either upcoming or um, in the process of wrapping up his Kickstarter. Uh, and I will briefly show those as well. But what I didn't have at the time was the uh, was the basic rules for utilizing those uh, Kickstarter supplements. So uh, it took me a little while to get around to it, but uh, I finally ordered it and uh, it has just arrived. So let me switch screens here. <coughs> so um, so here it is. I'll, pretty decent sized book. It's not huge. It is a total of, and, and this is literally my first looking through it, uh, looks like there's a total of about 200 pages. So about 200 pages of it, and it is it is modeled off of OD&D, so 1974 Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, you immediately see that when you start seeing some of the details here. Um, there are some differences, though, and there's some modifications. Uh, so for attributes, you're still rolling 3d6, but you get to place them as you wish. Um, the attribute modifiers are a little bit different, and I'm going to go into much more detail uh, of that later on. But the one that really stood out to me was that uh, your intelligence modifier doesn't increase the number of languages you can speak. Uh, it increases your ability with certain particular skills, like secondary skills that are intelligence related, of course. And then it also uh, increases the level limit of the spells that you can cast as a, uh, you know, as a magic user. <coughs> so I, I like that system better. It's something that I used to homebrew all the time was to give that, uh, to give a spell boost based on your intelligence modifier, and for clerics, a spell boost based on their wisdom modifier. Going further through and just looking through the, the character classes, there were only four. There's Burglar or Rogue. There's Cleric of the uh, Deliquane, so very, very specific there. Uh, fighters or Fighting Men. And Magic User, which is Magic User. So, um, and then character backgrounds are humans, elves, half-elves, halflings, and dwarves. Individual abilities. We have a list of uh, <coughs> attribute-based abilities. So area knowledge, athletics, climbing, eavesdropping, haggling, herb lore, history, intimidation, Ledger, ledger main, locution, mathematics, natural philosophy, perception, physician, professional, and then the type, you select the type, research, stealth, survival, strategy, tomatology, then you have weapon proficiencies, and that's all I'll keep it for right now, and I will be going through this uh, in much, much more detail over the next couple of weeks. <coughs> Probably about two or three videos on this over the next two weeks because at ShireCon, uh, which is the next convention that I am attending, I am going to switch views here for you. At ShireCon, as you can see, uh, this is on September 27th and 28th. I am actually sitting in the game run by Robert Connolly, uh, and it's called Deceits of the Russet Lord. And as you can see, the Deceits of the Russet Lord is a swords and wizardry slash majestic fantasy adventure involving star-crossed lovers, corrupt monks, rebellious peasants, tyrannical lords, bloodthirsty orcs, and the fairy that orchestrated it all, the Russet Lord. So this is fully booked. 
Um, but there, there probably still are some slots. And as you can see, this one is fully booked and there I am right there. Um, this convention is a phenomenal convention. If you can get yourself out there, I'm sure that there are still badge sales available. Um, there is probably still games that you can jump in on. Uh, let's see how many games you can still get in on. So you can still get in on um, two games here, three games. Let's see. Quite a few for Friday afternoon. <coughs> so quite a few for Friday afternoon. Uh, so I would definitely try to jump in on any of those. Um, and then Saturday morning, there's still quite a few, including my own, including uh, Whiskey Creek Runs Red. It's a Gangbusters BX, and there are still three tickets left for that. So if you can get yourself out there, uh, you can jump certainly in on my game. And then, you know, wrapping it up, going through, there are still, there are still available slots throughout, um, throughout the convention where you can certainly put together a full schedule of uh, gameplay. So I highly recommend that you do that as well. So um, really looking forward to digging in deeper with uh, the Majestic Fantasy RPG. Uh, I will be bringing it to have Rob sign it when I, uh, when I do play in his game. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll do a character creation beforehand just to get a real sense of it. Although I'm, I'm probably sure that we'll most likely be using uh, pre-generated characters at the convention. Uh, but uh, we'll certainly do a video on character creation before that uh, convention. And uh, again, September 27th and 28th, ShireCon 2024. Uh, it is in uh, New Canaan, Connecticut. I believe that's, that's the correct address. Uh, but if you just look up ShireCon, you'll, you'll find it there. Go to Tabletop Events and you'll find it under ShireCon 2024. And uh, you'll have a chance to meet uh, Rob Connolly and, uh, and perhaps uh, pick up a copy of, of this while you're there. I don't know if he actually does any vending while he's in place, but uh, I wouldn't imagine that he doesn't. So you can always check that out. And you can get all of these on drive through RPG as well. So and when I say all of these, I'm talking about the complete set now. So we have the, the RPG. We have Black Marsh, which is a setting book. We have the Isle of uh, Pied, which is a setting book. And then how to make a fantasy, um, how to make a fantasy sandbox. This was the Kickstarter. And then these were... Uh, stretch goals or uh, just inclusions that you could add on and now I have the complete set which I'm really excited about um, and you know I was considering finding something to run a limited series uh, through um, through B2 the keep on the borderlands but I wanted to use a, a different system than uh, d d basic and this might be a contender too if I see enough differences uh, in it that it would really change that experience of going through uh, Keep on the Borderlands. So, as always, thanks for joining. I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen sometime soon um, or at that convention in about two weeks, uh, two weeks and two days, roughly. And um, as always, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, the channel just hit uh, 3480. So we're 20, uh, 20 subscribers away from uh, hitting that milestone of 3,500. I would love to hit that before the convention. Uh, so that would be really, really exciting. And uh, since many of my passers through um, are not subscribed yet, you know, please consider doing so. Hit the alert button so you'll get alerts for new videos coming on. And uh, as always, I uh, really appreciate uh, especially your comments in the comments section, which drives the content on my channel. Uh, a lot of times people will suggest something and then I do it. I'm doing my shelf tour based on subscriber uh, request. I'm uh, doing 
Sumerian, uh, Sumerian September. Once again, suggested by other subscribers and, uh, and a, a wide variety of other things as well. So I try to be as responsive to my subscribers as possible. Um, I'm running games for my members. Uh, and so uh, if, if you can join as a member, that's uh, even more access that you'll have to some of my activities in the uh, gaming sphere. So thank you very much and have a great day.